Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Here we go. Now the third leading rusher in the NFL last year, Todd Gurley. He'll have a first down past the 40 as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for L.A. So many questions about Todd Gurley in the offseason. How good is the knee? I mean, remember, he had a heavy workload the last couple of years, nearly 4,000 yards from scrimmage, 40 total touchdowns, but just four carries in the NFC Championship game, 10 in the Super Bowl. So we'll see what kind of usage he gets this season. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now on second down, this is Gurley. Give him four on the carry there, but that only takes him back to where they started. Third and ten. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. To throw is gone. Trying to find Cup, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Touchdown. Well, it was third down defensively. They were just hoping to make a play and get off the field, get their offense on. Instead, they did one better. Pick it off, take it into the end zone. Well, they did what you said. They got they off did the get field. Off. They're going to have to come right back on. They're going to come right back on, but happily, right? They put the ball in the end zone. That's the way you start a game. That's the way you set the tone. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This will be taken short. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Los Angeles Rams in week 11 got a 17-7 win over Chicago, Charles. Their offense taking over again here. You know, that was a much-needed Sunday night victory against the Bears to get to 6-4. and four, And it came on the heels of a very flat performance in a loss to Pittsburgh in week 10. So the Rams just kind of oscillating back and forth a bit. And they can't afford to do that. They've got to chase down San Francisco and Seattle within their own division. One bright spot, we saw Todd Gurley run the ball as effectively as we've seen all year long, mainly in the first half before the Bears made some adjustments. But he did have 97 yards on the ground. They'll need that Todd Gurley the rest of the way. They're holding in on the playoff race in the NFC. Right now, still a game and a half back of Minnesota for the number six spot. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Like 20. They're not ready for this, man. They're not ready for this. They still On first and 10, Goff. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. 
It'll be a pickup of just two, and it's a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people have to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. On first down, it's Gurley. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Throwing on third, gone. And a throw there going to be incomplete. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Zerline's kick is up and through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So it's not an NFL record, but it's not far off. That'll go in the books as a 61-yard field goal. And wasn't it weird to see a guy line up for a field goal on the other side of midfield? The ball got halfway there, and you thought, no way is that going to make it. But it just kept carrying and carrying, and he winds up sneaking it right over the bar. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Ravens set to get the football back. And Charles, this is a team now at 8-2 and two after that Week 11 win over Houston. Gosh, looking at the standings here, they've got a three-game lead in the <laughs> AFC North. And you would think that would lock things down, especially when you consider they're on a six-game winning streak as well. They've beaten guys like Tom Brady. Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson in the past month averaging 34 points per game. How can you stop this team? But look at their schedule coming up. They're at the Rams on a Sunday night game. That's not an easy task. The Rams are defending NFC champs. Then they host NFC West leading San Francisco. Then they're at Buffalo who would be in the playoffs if the season ended today. So you may be three games behind in the division. But don't give up on it yet. They've got a tough schedule ahead. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. Too far downfield. Something those linemen have to watch out for. And that time it costs them. After the penalty, it's Ingram. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Here's 
Jackson on third and long. They go screen. This is Ingram. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Give him nine on the carry that time. And they're set up with a second and one. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> We're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. A big play there, Goff to Cup, 43 yards. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Goff now looking to throw. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. And that'll bring up second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Second and ten. Goff again. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. The last catch took him two yards in the wrong direction, so now what can they do on third? And that's complete to Cooks. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. A 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams have taken the lead. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Zerline good with a PAT. And the lead is now 10-7. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? 
I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second and six, just inside the 30. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And an alley to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. On first and ten, it's Jackson stepping up. He'll try and run. And he slides to avoid the hit. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Well, everyone in this stadium knows Jackson can do that as well as any QB in the league. Uh, they talked about limiting some of his running this year, especially the design runs, but he's still going to scramble when he feels he has green in front of him. He led all quarterbacks last year, 695 yards rushing. And keep in mind, 80% of those came in the seven-game stretch when he was named starter late in the season. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. On the counter, Ingram. The former Charger All-Pro, Eric Weddle, on the stop. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. On second down, Ingram. Ingram churning. He lost the football. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. So they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, say, as you've said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Seven yards there and a first down. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Ten seven, our score after one, right here on EA Sports. What? One eighty. Thirty-six. Coming. Six guys. They run out of the shotgun with Gurley. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. He stayed afloat for a second there after the first wave of contact, but it, he, that was going nowhere. Yeah, what did he tell us in pregame? I just don't want to get my feet stopped initially when I'm trying to make a run. That's exactly what happened there. Unfortunately, as you noted, got away a little bit from the first one, but the wave swarmed him under. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Really in a hole here, third and 17, following the two negative plays. Here's Gaul. 
Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. A short gain there of just four, and that'll bring up a fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Now we see a man who got a workout in last year's Super Bowl, Johnny Hecker on to punt for the Rams. Back deep is DeAnthony Thomas. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Amazing. Perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. It's a seven yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, both teams practice this situation. And this time, the guys on offense won and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave them some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage or do you play normal defense? They may have backed them off with that run. The throw there, finding its way to Boyle. And they take this up near the 30 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. Nice throw there by Jackson. You think about what a boost he gave Baltimore the middle of last year, led them to victories in six of their last seven games as a starter, replacing Joe Flacco, who had the hip issue. And that strong finish was good enough for the Ravens to capture their first AFC North crown since 2012. And now Jackson's a known commodity. He's the unquestioned starter and with increased expectations and pressure on the former Heisman Trophy winner. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. They'll roll him out right. And he's going to keep it here. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Opted to run for it. The go. decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. They'll run the jet sweep with Brown. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Anytime the offense shows what they call a shot play or a chunk play where they're trying to get big yardage, sometimes if people just call it gadget plays, and you hold it to a gain that we just saw there, you feel pretty good about yourself as a defense. On second down now, it's Ingram, and he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Two yards, good enough for a first. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. And now Jackson will look to throw it. This will be caught by Brown. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams 18. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. They'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. 
He really hasn't been able to get on track running the football, averaging less than four yards a carry. Yeah, I think that they're going to enjoy the film session because all the defenders are filling their proper gaps on just about every play. And you know what they always say for a defensive coach, when I click off this film, I better see 11 jerseys in the picture going after the ball carrier. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. Third down here. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. He's got it to Ingram, complete. And he is going to be stopped at the 12, short of the first down. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be fourth down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will knot us up at 10. Tucker named the league's all-pro kicker for the third time in 2018. Go ahead and admit it. The only time that you get excited about Justin Tucker kicking is when he actually misses. It's and rare. excited is not the right word. Surprise is more what we're talking about. 90.1% coming into 2019. He's incredible. Ten apiece as the kicks away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Goff now to throw. And that'll be caught by Cup. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. You know, you wonder how the Rams game plan in Super Bowl 53 might have been different with a healthy Cooper Cup. He was injured on November 11, torn ACL out for the year. But he was on his way to a 1,000-yard season in his second NFL campaign at 566 yards in eight games before the injury. Goff now looks to throw. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he's got this down to the 35. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. Now gone. And he'll find his target. Woods, it's complete. A nice gain of 21 yards. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Goff now, 8 of 11 in this first half. He's got it first and 10. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. You got it. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. It's on field. It's on field. It's 
He had another carry here tonight for Gurley. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And his carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown Rams. From 10 yards out as his guys are able to regain the lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that makes it a 17-10 score. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This will be taken very short. And he nearly broke that for more. But as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Draw play, Ingram now. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did, and remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. Here's gone. 
And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And with that, folks, I want to remind you to join the NFL Salute to Service. This season, the NFL and its players are honoring those who proudly serve our country. And fans are encouraged to join NFL players in writing letters to service members and their families. To learn how you can send your letter today, visit NFL.com slash salute. To throw again on second down. Golf, and he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That's a gain of 13 first down Rams. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. He's not going to get me. Whip, 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 whip. Watch the whip. Whip, whip, whip. A shotgun snap for gone. And Woods has it complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Goff now, 11 to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. To the air again. Goff gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Well, they had the right down and the definite distance to take a shot downfield, but it didn't work out the way that they had envisioned. No, that's a situation where if, if you take a sack close to the line of scrimmage, it's not that bad, but a loss like that, you can't, you can't take a sack there. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing you cannot do, they did. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Now Gurley, and they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now the Baltimore Get offense ready. heading back out onto the field. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room, start over. Quick throw taken in by Sneed. And no forward progress here. This is going to be a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your putter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. And this will be a touchback Let's as go. that sails over the end line. 
Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe that might no. actually pop and turn into a big play. That's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. So we come upon halftime here in Southern California with the Rams on top as we send you cross country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. The Rams gonna get the football first here and they look to build on their lead as the second half gets started. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. From the gun, Jackson. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Goff on third down. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Marching in for the sack, Matthew Judon. Hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. A 27-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. Zerline, of course, last year had likely the iconic field goal of the season, booting that 57-yarder in the Superdome to send his squad to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you really hurt the Saints fans on that one, didn't you? Sorry. They didn't want to hear that at all. But this guy deserves his nicknames. Greg the Leg, Legatron, because the ball goes through the post at a heavy rate, 87% in 2018. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Marquise Brown, the rookie, his intended target, and it's second down. All right, CD, let's look ahead to Week 12. The week before Thanksgiving, hard to believe some big games. It started Thursday night, Colts-Texans, to decide who would go ahead in that division, but also Seahawks-Eagles, a game that you're going to be doing. That's a big one. It's a monster one, and if you look at the Eagles' record, you would think they absolutely have to have it. But in the NFC East, even a loss doesn't eliminate them, does it? But if they win, they could be neck and neck with Dallas. With Seattle, they're trying to keep pace and stay right on the heels of San Francisco in the NFC West. How about Dallas at New England? That's a big-time game. The Cowboys trying to maintain their lead in the NFC East. New England just one loss. And Green Bay at San Francisco. Mm. That game got flexed to Sunday night and deserved to be. That could be one of the better ones we'll see this year. Yeah, that's a trio of games that is very, very strong this weekend. This pass complete. Jackson finding Andrews. 
Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now third down that's is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Well, will get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard line. Not too bad. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> you put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe> bash. <laughs> I don't know about that. Bash, <laughs> Super tall. Well, with that incompletion, I, I want to get your MVP thoughts. Lamar Jackson, he seems to be the leader right now, is he not? I would agree with that. His team is the hottest team in the league right now. And then you've got, well, let's think of the others. Dak Prescott, yeah, Russell they, Wilson. Yeah. Who else? Christian McCaffrey? I would say Christian McCaffrey, although it's hard for a running back to win it. Don't forget Michael Thomas with the Saints continued to have big numbers even while Drew Brees was out. But also if Patrick Mahomes gets hot and the Chiefs run off a string, he's a defending NFL MVP. But think about this. If Lamar Jackson does win the MVP, he'll be the first 22-year-old to do it since Jim Brown. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Here's gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It'll be a first down for the Rams there on a pickup of 18. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Go, come on. 180. Let's go. Drop these, drop these. <laughs> From the 50, it's gone. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Jalen Ferguson coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Third and long. It's gone. And this is what here? Incomplete, they say. It looked like it was intercepted, but he apparently did not get the two feet down in bounds. And that's why defenders are often frustrated offensive guys. Actually made the catch, looked good doing it, but couldn't get his feet down in order to finish off the takeaway. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. 
And that had far too much air under it. It's out of the back of the end zone. And the football will come out to the 20-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Jackson from the shotgun. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Sam Cook now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Out of the gun. Gone. Now he'll let this one go, deep left sideline. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail, second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. That's well, a jet sweep, the football to Woods. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Well, that play looks familiar because we saw them working on it in practice this week. And for a lineman trying to block on this play, they love when they get the defense moving in one direction. And when they try and change directions, it's a lot easier to pick them up and ward them off. Back to throw, gone. And that's complete to Cooks. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They run, it's Gurley. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. I don't think Gurley got there. Looks like the defense held him back. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. 
a 45-yard attempt. Oh, look at this. A flip to the kicker. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. I actually like the fake, all right? It gave it a shot. This is one of those plays where you really think you're going to fool people because he shoveled it off to the kicker, and he was going to try and get it running. <laughs> we have seen it be successful before, but definitely not on this play. Yeah, I was going to say, as the kicker, when you see that it's probably not going to work, just terror and panic in your eyes, I would imagine. What we really needed there was the close-up of his face while yeah. he was running. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Ingram again, a first down carry. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Ingram, 54 yards as his guys are back within a single score. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Tucker with the extra point, and that will shave one more off this lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will be taken short. And they're going to have good starting field position. He's out of bounds, but not before he's across the 35. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Goff now looking to throw. Open man is Higby, the tight end. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's Gurley now, out of the gun. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. On first down, gone. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 25 yards there on the catch and run. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Now a first down throw, gone. And his throw here is incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And that'll bring up second down. 
By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It'll be a pickup of eight on the screen, and it sets up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Gurley. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. From the gun, here's Goff. That's complete to his tight end, Higby. No gain there on the completion. Get It'll be second game, down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Now gone. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. From three yards out, and the Rams tack on to their advantage. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Zerline good with a PAT, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This is taken near the 13. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw is Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Here's Jackson. Going to throw again. Sneed's got it. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. 
Well, Sneed figures to be an important veteran presence for Lamar Jackson. Two years ago, it was a disappointing 2017 for Sneed. That was in New Orleans, but then had a bit of a bounce back campaign a season ago in his first go around with Baltimore. 62 catches, 650 yards. Did have surgery in the offseason on his left index finger, but back to full health and ready to go. Jackson's throw on target to Willie Sneed. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. You cannot write these guys off just yet. Not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Jackson will throw again. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first and ten, it's Jackson. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Nikel Roby Coleman there defensively. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. To throw is Jackson. Throwing again. Escaping the pressure right. He's going to take off with it. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. The Ravens on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. Here it's third and two. Jackson. And he's got his target. That's more. Now the ball comes loose. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 22. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And all the way down to the 35. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. Just more of the same there, partner. Guys have just been running free in the secondary this entire game. No pass rush. A lot of passes completed. Been an easy day for him. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Now it's Gurley. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. Well, that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team because they see this starting to happen as well. So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. Curly with a carry on first down. He'll only get a couple. Second and eight forthcoming. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, no doubt here in the fourth quarter, this is a huge defensive series. Hey, they can read the scoreboard. They realize if they give up a field goal here, this game might be out of reach. They understand the stakes and are playing accordingly. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Cooper Cup was his intended target, and it's third down. 
Now, the secondary has really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock oh, ball God. away, turned into a nice play. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. And it's caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. They're able to get a couple here but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. But well, a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second Go. score there. Well, this drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Another carry now for Gurley. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Todd Gurley. His second touchdown of the night. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. We well, got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space, but how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that will make this a 19-point game. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This will be taken very short. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And last time, the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Throwing now, Jackson on first down, rolling to his right. He'll try and run it, and this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Throwing again on second down, Jackson. He's going to take off with it. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Ready? 
To throw again on second down. Jackson, it's complete to Snead. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Get ready, get ready, Seven get yards ready. there and a first down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Throwing is Jackson. And this will be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Jackson to throw again. His throw incomplete. Hayden Hurst, former first-round pick, the intended target, and it's third down. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, so a lot of credit to the defensive game plan and especially the execution. Now Jackson. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 19, and he'll take this back all the way up past the 45-yard line. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Here's Gurley. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield strike. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he'll find his target, Woods. It's complete. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Last stop. Last stop. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shot of the 40. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well conditioned. And he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. Sack. Got him. Let's go, boys. Let's go. After the sack, here's second and 11. Focus, defense, focus. Switch, switch, switch. Now a handoff for Gurley. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. points of this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard you're a defensive guy but it was a fun little track meet wasn't it it was and you know the people really enjoyed this game they're the ones that like going to batting practice at the major league baseball <laughs> parks right seeing the 14 to 11 game that sort of deal that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports.
The Rams are victorious here as we say so long from Exposition Park in L.A.